Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thorne and Bridget are devastated to learn that their father is dying, and Eric begins his party with a toast. Ridge welcomes Thorne to Forrester, saying, You were missed around here. Thorne sees no change and is looking forward to seeing everyone at the celebration. Ridge mumbles about that. Thorne inquires as to what he refused to tell him over the phone. Is everything O? Oh? Ridge. Thorne inquires. Ridge shakes his head and says, Dad isn't feeling well. Thorne recognises he's sick and inquires as to the severity of his condition. There's no easy way to tell you this, Ridge says. My father is dying. Thorn Ridge bed and breakfast Katie Hope and Brooke dress for Eric's party in the design office. Brooke reminds them that they must make this a happy event for him. Bridget is on her way and she dreads informing her that her father is dying. Ridge appears to be telling Thorn something as they converse. Eric admires Donna's clothing at the Forrester guesthouse. She coaxes him to his feet and tells him he's always been the most attractive man in the room. He coughs, and she asks whether he's sure he'll be able to pull off the party tonight. You look like Harrison Ford, Donna says as she helps him put on his suspenders and jacket and adjusts his hair. You are the most exquisite and gorgeous man I have ever seen. Eric declares that tonight's celebration will be fantastic. One last family gathering, Deb, Eric, Donna, and Luna admire each other's looks in the event venue at Forrester as Zendi and Thomas look on. Zendi inquires whether everyone at the party is aware of the truth. Thomas is surprised that Zendi, Naji says his father told him earlier. I'm sorry, Thomas says to Zendi. Zendi apologizes for being so harsh on RJ, saying, I didn't realize you were working with Grandad. I believe it's fantastic that you've been assisting him. Carter enters the group, and Zendi mumbles that he expected them to spend more time with Grandad. Carter summarizes his critical situation. This is a farewell party. Hope and Brooke wait in the design office for Bridget, who enters and cheerfully greets them with embraces. What is this occasion, though? She inquires. Isn't it the introduction of his new line? Brooke mumbles, I wish. Mum, Bridget inquires. What's the deal with that look, Ma? Zender's agreement with the devil, Thorn, in the main office, is perplexed as to why he is only learning now. Ridge claims that he is not meant to know. These are their father's desires. Thorn can't believe he's supposed to let his father go without saying anything. Ridge encircles him in an embrace, understands Thorn is aware of his presence, and moves across the room to embrace him. I'm not ready to let Dad go. Weeps Thorn. Deg D. Steffi Thorndana tells Eric not to ask for a cocktail in the Forrester living room. He inhales some oxygen and informs her that it is beneficial. Eric, are you sure you want to go through with this? Katie asks as she walks in. Eric declares that the party has begun. She begs him to go to the hospital, but he is dead set on throwing the party of his dreams. They'll never forget this party. Eric's missing children have been recovered. Brooke consoles Bridget in the design studio after learning that her father is dying off-screen. She inquires whether Eric has sought a second opinion, and her mother informs her that multiple oncologists have reviewed his case. Bridget observes, there's no known cure. Hope is deeply sorry for what she is experiencing. Bridget can't believe they have to attend to this party, and she has to pretend she doesn't know. Brooke summarizes that it is what Eric desires. Bridget sobs uncontrollably. Bridget Brookbed and Breakfast Donna and Katie tell Eric that everything is in order at the Forrester Mansion. He can't wait to see the room full with individuals he cares about. Memories etched into my soul. As Donna and Katie exchange worrisome looks, he inhales some more oxygen. Carter, Luna, Thomas, Zendi and Jar are joined in the event site by Hope, Steffi, Brooke, Bridget and Thorn. They cry about Eric until Ridge appears. He says that they are all dressed up for a party that they should not be at. He believes it will be difficult for his father and all of them. If someone thinks they are unable to mask their pain, they should remain here. 
Tonight isn't about mourning, but about honouring a great... This is a once-in-a-lifetime performance. Thorne can't promise he won't cry when he sees his father. Bridget screams about the faking being unhealthy. Ridge and Brooke strive hard to persuade her that they will be okay. We have no choice. For him, joy and happiness. Can you pull it off? Bridget gives a nod. Ridge instructs everyone to put on their game faces and says, Let's go. Ridge and Brooke embrace as they all file out. Thorn, Ridge, Zendi Carter, Steffi's wish, RJ Brooke... Eric sucks oxygen at the Forrester estate before asking Katie to put the tank away. He reminds Donna that they, along with RJ and Luna, must be the only ones who know. Brooke and Ridge join the others. Bridget hugs her father, who compliments her on her beauty. Eric giggles that Thorne arrived just in time, and they both embrace. Eric laughs. My kids. His children are the best thing he has ever done. They have no idea how much it means to him that they went out of their way to be there. Luna and RJ are the first to welcome Eric, followed by Zendi and Thomas, who hug their grandfather. Eric embraces Carter and reminds him. Katie pours champagne, and Donna proclaims that Eric wants to make the most of their time together. Look at you. You look terrific, Eric says to every one of them. He wants this evening to be filled with joy, music, and love. He promises a night filled with love, laughing, and good vibes. To joy and laughter, as Eric's hand trembles violently, nearly spilling his bubbly, they all raise their glasses and turn away awkwardly. Sandy Ridge, Thomas Steffi Brooke wishes Bridget Thorne Rod Luna Carter, Katie Eric, and Donna on the bold. And the beautiful, Eric enjoys a unique moment with each of his guests, and Lie wonders why Finn is doing research when he should be with Steffi. Why is Lass suspicious of Finn's research, and why is he missing Eric's party? The beautiful and the bold updates and spoilers tease La Finnegan Raomi Matsuya begins to suspect John Finn Finnegan's Tanner Novlin studies. She doesn't think he should prioritise that over going to the huge Forrester party with his wife. Spoilers for the bold and the beautiful, why is he here? Obviously, Lee had to work the night of the Forrester party, without knowing it was a big finale party ordered by a dying Eric Forrester John McCook. She wouldn't be at the hospital if she didn't catch her son researching in his hospital office instead of attending a society function with his wife. The bold and beautiful lie is suspicious of Finn's research. Why is he missing Eric's party? Finn appears to be running late or intends to skip it entirely, which makes sense given Eric's terminal diagnosis. Finn is looking to discover whether his doctors overlooked anything or if he can locate any experimental therapies for Eric. Lee is unaware of this, so she chastises him for allowing Liam Spencer or Sheila Carter to approach his wife. Beck A. must be secretive, but they may give some hints. Finn must, of course, remain covert, but perhaps he can drop some hints to his mother. It's possible Lee has some expertise that could help Eric, or she may know someone professionally who can assist Finn and Bridget Forrester Jones with Martin Fairy Fields. Later this month, this doctor might be someone Lie knows and has referred to, but Eric will have to approve seeing the new doctor. With his breakdown at Forrester Creations, it's probable that by the time the gala rolls around, he'll be unable to consent for himself and on the verge of death. He was already preparing legal documents to determine who would manage commercial transactions after his death, and he may have designated someone as his medical power of attorney. Can this man be saved from the bold and beautiful? Finn will do everything he can to save Eric if at all possible, despite his mother's inquisitive interference, whether she leaps in to help or not. Steffi Forrester Finnegan, like the rest of her family, is struggling to cope with the awful circumstance. By the time Bridget and Finn speak with the new doctor, Eric may be in a coma or otherwise unable to consent to medical treatment. After all, Eric wanted everything kept a secret and didn't want Bridget or Thorn Forrester, who will soon arrive for the celebration, to find out, but they are.